losing a job. Job loss, ladies and gentlemen, a surprise job loss. What do you do? And also, by extension, losing a business. Because let's face it, nowadays, the majority of people who create businesses end up simply creating a job for themselves. We're going to go through in this video what to do when you lose your job in many different aspects of being, in many different financial levels, so to speak. And more importantly, and most importantly, we're going to go into what to do when you have a job, when you get that job, and when you're taking the point of view of this channel, the point of view of rapid lifestyle uh, transformation, the point of view of being free from a job and a boss within six months to a year, and then very shortly after that, or perhaps concurrently with that, being completely free from any need to take any action for income, ladies and gentlemen. It's an idea whose time has come, and we're going to use this modality to talk about it and bring it home in a way that I think we have not done on this channel before. So that's coming right up. You don't want to miss this big video, very powerful video, on what to do when you lose your job. So great afternoon. This is Javier with The Real Javier Novoa channel a platform and a modality where we apply the principles of philosophy, spirituality, mysticism. Those are the most important things, ladies and gentlemen. The unseen is what drives the seen. And as Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, and all of the great Stoic philosophers said, and as all of the great religious and spiritual traditions teach, we must seek the cause, ladies and gentlemen. We must seek the causal and not look to the effect. And then, when we get to the root cause, the effects take care of themselves. And we apply all of these, as well as business and good practical planning, to rapid lifestyle transformation, to being free, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Free from having to go out and be tied to this prison group. And we call it a prison grid for a reason, ladies and gentlemen. Many of these people are psychopaths. And they demonstrate it in their behavior. They demonstrate it in their callous regard, rather callous disregard, for people under their charge and for the fact that they just use people as dispensable pawn pieces. And that is driven home in a story from just yesterday that I can tell here. A close friend of ours, ladies and gentlemen, a close friend of ours, a person who this channel knows well, who this platform knows well, ended up losing their job yesterday. It came suddenly, ladies and gentlemen. It came without warning and with no rhyme or reason. This person was simply taken into a room and told that their position was gone and they were given some feeble excuses and so on and so forth, but the point is that without any apparent reason, the person was out of a job. And this was a person who was just getting started in implementing a lot of the modalities that I talked about on our channel. And so this person was going to save significant parts of the paychecks. Well, that possibility is now gone, at least for now. There's another, shall we say, set of phenomena in the pipeline, but we're not going to tell you about that until he confirms to us that this is actually finalized, because remember, when our manifestations are not yet manifestations, we're not to tell other people about them. In fact, this is rule number one, because when you tell people about them, there's an energetic clash there's a dissipation of the energy as well as the people might just talk you out of it. And once you're talked out of it, well, then you're not going to be focused on that. You're not going to be getting into the state of that. So we'll be having more details for you as this uh, story progresses. And of course, I advise the person. First of all, this is going to differ. We're just going to give some general advice, of course. Give specific advice in specific situations, but there are a few prongs, so to speak, of people that lose their jobs. First
first of all, job loss is something that's going to be happening more and more. And again, it's simply because of the fact that these people are in prison, sociopaths, they have no regard for humanity. They have no regard for the people working under them. And the system has no regard. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, why would we be attached to the system? Why would we stay? No. We need to give our votes of approval for something better by each of us stepping into our own freedom and going off grid, so to speak, getting off the prison grid and becoming independent, ladies and gentlemen. And that's going to take applying the modalities of this channel. It's going to take a constant application or a, a constant and a conscious application of them because as Neville Goddard says, remember, these principles don't work themselves. You are the operant power and you have to apply them. You have to use the principles. So, remember, hydrate. It's a very important thing to keep hydrated and to keep your body as healthy as possible. These are also actions that we can do on this film roll. And why take action on the film roll when it is all created? And this is not a creation of action, we're going to go into that as well. But, so there are different prongs. The first group of people are people who have savings accumulated for a year or more. And to these people I'd say, you lost your job? That's awesome, because what the heck are you doing working at a job anyway? You have this go-to-hell money, so to speak. You have savings that are accumulated where you can live for a year or more, and that's how it's calculated. Can I live and pay my bills for a year or more? Even if it's for only a year, ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't go quit your job. If it's for five years or more, I would definitely quit my job today, because if need be, you can go and get another one. But you have time. And time is important on the film roll. Why is that? Because you have time now to focus into the other film roll and to start acting as if. Because remember, once we are actually clicked with the state in which we want to be, we'll start being inspired to actions. But a lot of times on the current film roll, we don't have time to pursue those actions. And so ironically, it's sort of like a vicious circle. You don't have time to perform the action, so therefore you don't perform the action, you just get stuck more on that current film roll. But you have time, ladies and gentlemen. Use that money to buy yourself some time, especially if it's well over a year. Now, if you have a year or more, congratulations. What I would do is I would take at least a month to three months, depending how much you have and depending on how comfortable you feel. Because remember, if it doesn't feel comfortable, don't do it, but do what you feel comfortable doing. If you could take a few months off, and we're going to be teaching more on this, it's basically going to be going into the strategic plan and say, okay, what do I have now that I have this, now that I'm in this state, what can I do now? And then you just begin acting as if you're in that state. And that state is freedom. That state is self-reliance, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going into the state of self-reliance. Now, if you have less than a year of savings, what I would say to you is, yes, on this film roll right now, you're going to have to continue to seek streams of income. And they may be independent, but right now you may not have enough capital to risk on being independent. So you might have to go and find work on this film roll. And so, but what I'd recommend you do is, depending on how much money you have, take a few days to a few weeks off and use that time to basically do the strategic plan, to take a step back and to figure out what it is that you want to have going forward. And then action, of course, will be inspired to you there. Now, the next person is going to be the person who has a month or under a month's 
saving saved up, ladies and gentlemen. And that is a person who is a month away from being homeless if they don't have a job. And surprisingly, a recent poll said that 60 to 70 percent of the American population doesn't have more than $400 saved up for an emergency. That is by design, ladies and gentlemen, because the prison grid is in the interest of having us so dependent upon it. And not only do they have us depend upon them for a job, they have us depend upon them for food. Not only how it's grown and how we procure it, but also many of us don't have basic cooking skills. And putting something in the microwave or heating up a pre-planned meal or a pre-made meal is not cooking skills, ladies and gentlemen. Many of us don't have those skills. Many of us do not have the technical skills to repair our own stuff. So everything is basically purchased from the prison grid. Our income comes from the prison grid and then is spent on the prison grid. So the prison grid likes to keep us sucked dry. When they're finished with you, they will terminate you and they will leave you on the streets, ladies and gentlemen. That's why it's more important than ever to focus to get off that prison grid. Now, this is not negativity. This is basically a goad to get you to focus on the second part of this video, which is the most important part of this video, which is going to talk about resilience, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Resilience and self-reliance. But back to what to do. Just very quickly, this person might find himself in that first category of people that only have a month or more saved. Well, he has little savings. So the first thing to do, of course, is what we talked about in the past video. We will be talking about it also in future videos. And that is, especially if you're in that first category and don't have any money, you might not even, you might know that you're going to get evicted within a few days to a few weeks because you can't pay your rent. Well, you have no choice there. The first thing you have to do is get out of that deep despair. That might take a day or a few days. You might not even have a day. You might have to go start applying to jobs today in that negative state, and you've got to do what you've got to do. So be it. But if you have one to three days, I'd recommend taking that one to three days. We're going to post the link to that video that we made a few months ago in the description. It's a step-by-step -step method of how to get out of that complete despair. Because ladies and gentlemen, this channel is not for the middle class, it's not for the rich only, although it caters to everybody, it caters to them too. But it's also for people who have no resources whatsoever. Because many Law of Assumption channels assume that you have resources. You have the resources to go to a spa. You have the resources to go to a meditation retreat. And while, when, and if you apply these principles, you will soon have those resources. You may not now, and I'm here to serve you as well. So, what you do there, if you have the resources, I'd recommend taking three days. And the first day I'd recommend, if you can, just focus on getting out of that vibrational muck. And you can watch that video that we made about that that I'm going to post here. This person was in a vibrational muck because it was so shocking and it was so horrifying, as he said, the people were laughing and joking with him just a few minutes before, and then they said, step into the office, and they just quickly terminated the person as if they were soulless automatons. Of course, they are soulless servants of the prison grid. But, so this person was shot for a day. He would sort of get out of despair and then go back in, but he was in a groove. But by the time he slept, because he used the technique that we're going to give you right now, he felt a little nervous while he slept. But when he woke up, he told me that he woke up just energized. He slept very heavily. And then he woke up, as Abraham Hicks would say, in the vortex. And he is now pursuing other options and other opportunities. And he's feeling good. And we're, about, we're going to report news of that as I get it. But the first thing you do, ladies and gentlemen, when you can, is I want you to do a revision. Neville Goddard talks about revision. We've done videos about that too. What you do is, 
you change the past because physics proves this. In this is all science based. Physics tells us that there's no time. Time is an illusion. There's only present. So anything that you perceive as having happened in the past is actually happening now in the present. As the Stoics said, everything that happened continues to happen eternally. That is in the atomic level on the general level. So you can go back and you can revise the past. You can paint a scene or a picture and imagine it as if you wanted it to be. So being fired, let's say, or being terminated, imagine that as you want it to be. And you can do it however you want. You can imagine that you weren't even terminated. You can imagine that you were congratulated. But for this person, he told me that he was feeling sort of not at ease at that job. He was feeling sort of pressured and there were cliques and so on and so forth. So I told him not to imagine that he had that job. What I told him to imagine was the scene in which he actually terminated the employment. He told his employer, I have something else and I'm sorry, I'm going to have to terminate my employment, resign. And then I told him, and we came up with this together, to imagine that his employer said, we're sorry to see you go, but as a parting gift, we are going to deposit this amount of money into your account. Which, of course, they didn't do. But I told him to revise it as if, they were going to deposit a certain good amount of money that would allow him to live comfortably four months into his account. And then they told him to sign a piece of paper, and that was that. Now, he couldn't believe it, but I told him just keep imagining that scene and keep getting yourself into that scene until you believe it. Well, he did it during that day, and he said when he went to sleep, he believed that scene. And he was feeling the feeling as if he had that amount of money in his account and he felt that he's feeling much better today as I got the report earlier. So, do that first ladies and gentlemen before you do anything else. If you can take a day off and of course give yourself something good to eat. Relax. And that's the second thing that I told him. The second thing is I told him to take the weekend off. Don't even worry about trying to look for jobs because he had money to last him for a little while. So even if you have money just to last you two weeks, take a few days just to collect yourself. And that way you can start getting inspired action because sometimes you have to just go start applying. And and when you have to do that, I'd advise you just go do that. You can clean up the vibration later. But on this this, uh, film roll, you have to take the action to get yourself as comfortable as possible. Otherwise, you'll go down notches and it'll be harder for you to get back up. Of course, there's still a way there. So, there's nothing is ever lost. But do what you have to do. But this person could take three days off. So, I told him to take the weekend off. And he's with us in this one year getting off the prison grid and this one year being free from a job and a boss. So, I said, you're now free from a job and a boss. Think about it. He got Thursday off, he's got today off, and he's got the weekend off. There's nothing really you have to do till Monday. You don't have to go apply or anything, so don't even think about it unless you're inspired. If you're inspired, do it now. But just live this weekend, right? Live these few days and live them as if you're already off the prison grid and do exactly what you would do. Don't go and spend money. Anything that you need to spend money on, imagine doing that. Of course, that's the beautiful role of imagination. Because all is imagination, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, there's a great book uh, recommended by the great Neville Goddard called uh, The... uh, the, uh, It's a mountain pass in Switzerland. But... It's a dialogue, ladies and gentlemen. It's a philosophical dialogue that basically proves philosophically that everything is imagination. Everything is subjective. But even in science it proves this. Philosophy is proven from another angle and in mysticism and spirituality. Mysticism is proven via experience and in religion and spirituality is proven via scriptures. But it's proven in all modalities. Everything is an imagination. 
everything is an image. The subjectivist philosophers, the idealist philosophers talk about this. So you're not really filling it in, but for the sake of this film roll, whatever you can't see, fill it in. So you want to go to a steakhouse? Don't go to a steakhouse right now because you only have a little bit of savings, but imagine yourself going to that steakhouse. You know what? Today I'm doing nothing and I'm going to a steakhouse and perhaps go uh, to Tom Thumb and get some $15 steaks that, that you can get like 10 steaks and make them and then imagine yourself as you're eating those and have this feeling of steak that you're eating those in a steakhouse. Do whatever you would do. If you want to trade stocks and currencies, don't unless you have money to do that, don't go and do that, but basically do do the demo of trading stocks and currencies. You see where I'm going here. Use these days as days to basically live your freedom, to be free. And if the lack of job comes to you, ladies and gentlemen, then, you know, feel that. Don't try to get rid of it because this person, every now and then he felt that faint worry. On the first day, he was feeling strong worry, strong tension, and strong despair. Feel those feelings completely. Let them go through you. Be mindful about them. And then go straight back to the state that you want to create. And this weekend can serve as sort of a vacation for you and as sort of a time period that you could be that safe. Who knows what will happen after that, ladies and gentlemen. Perhaps something will occur. The person will get a sum of money or something and he won't have to go back to work. But let's say you do. What do you do when the weekend's over? Now, you know what field you're in, so do the normal and natural process, and of course, taking action on the film rolls, ladies and gentlemen. Why would we take action on the film rolls? Here's why. Because as Jeff Bezos said, when we know we can take an action and we don't take an action, and remember, imagining is an action, everything is an action. If we know we can take an action and we don't take an action, that causes more stress and you will feel it as a negative emotion. So take action. Inspired action is something that we should always take. It's beautiful. But if you don't necessarily feel inspired, but you still feel the necessity of taking an action, do that, ladies and gentlemen, because you'll need to apply to jobs. Now, if you're in a hurry, and let's say you don't hear back in one or two days, then apply to any job, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care if it's a subway. I don't care if it's a pizza delivery. By the way, if you have a car and you have one that's current, Uber and Uber Eats is another good way to do this. At least get some income, ladies and gentlemen. Take some actions and then do that mindfully. So for example, get into presence, like Eckhart Tolle says. You get into presence, complete presence, then you can perhaps go and do a job application. Put that in. Then go back into presence. Then you put your resume in somewhere else and so on and so forth. But live completely in the moment and do not expect an outcome. Do not prejudice the outcome. Accept any outcome, ladies and gentlemen. And then do that full time. And full time for this channel is four to five hours. After that, relax and get immediately back into the state of what it is that you want to create. That's taking action on this film role as well as getting onto the film role that you want to get onto. Because remember, there are two states here, ladies and gentlemen. There's that state of divinity, of being one with who you are, of that I am. And then there's that state of the current film role that you're on. You have to work on both, but both of those are going to merge, and because there's no true duality, the only dualism is for the sake of explanation and for the sake of helping you. So for example, you're utilizing the principles and techniques of intention even towards your job goal. For example, you want to get a certain job, even though you know that that's temporary, you could say, okay, I want a job where I feel relatively comfortable, where it's in my field, and you get into the state of that. Then you go out and you put in an application. Then you get back into the state of, I already have.
have that job, I'm already there. That doesn't contradict your true intention, which is to be free from the prison grid, which you also get into. Because you can have 20 intentions, because intentions are something that you're not working towards, but that you live as already being experienced. Then you go into the world of Caesar, and as Neville Goddard says, you take the normal and natural applications and actions of the world of Caesar. You don't stress yourself, you don't push yourself, but you do take the normal and natural actions there. So, you do that. And then, this will be a sort of weaving in and out of that. This will be a sort of You'll see that there's no contradiction between the two and that even goals and intentions, you can apply the same principles. And there will be a good outcome to that and things are going to come to you serendipitously. So this is what you do if you lose a job, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the most important discussion here is if you lose your job and you're unprepared, take this as a lesson, but for those of you who have jobs or still have jobs, we want this not to be a problem. We want you to be anti-fragile, ladies and gentlemen, because it saves energy. How do you do that? Well, as Nicholas Nassim Taleb talks about in his book, The Black Swan, and he talks about in his book, Anti-Fragility, go into something expecting the unexpected. Go into something expecting that it's going to go away, ladies and gentlemen. We know that everything in this existence, everything is coming into being and passing away. Even your selfhood, except for the true I am, everything that you can be conscious of is coming into being and passing away. So your job and your stream of income, whether it be a business or a job, will at some point pass away. You have to change the film roll to keep it going. You have to change the focus to keep it going. You have to change the content. But whenever you go into a new job or a new business, a great uh, business speaker talks about this, whenever you get a new job, the first step should be start looking for a new one or prepare your exit strategy. What's the first way to do this? Bare minimum, you need to have nine months of savings. That's right. And that feels out of reach for some people. And if it's out of reach for you, that's okay too, because we're going to teach you a way that you can get this into reach and that you can accomplish this. Because it may take three years for you to get them. Like Stephen Pressfield said, if it takes three years, it's going to take three years on this film. of this channel. So, make that an intention. I have nine months of savings. And then imagine yourself as having the nine months of savings and get into that state. I already have nine months of savings. Okay. So then you ask yourself, once you get into that state, what can I do to just get a little bit closer to that? Well, the first thing you should do is figure out how much you're spending per month. A lot of people don't know how much they're spending. So it could take a month to do this, tracking all your expenses, but you can just estimate it. How much do I spend a day? How much do I spend a week and a month on food? How much do I spend on transportation? How much do I spend on entertainment, so on and so forth? You can sit down for an hour, 20 minutes, and actually figure that out. These are part of the actions on the film roll that you're going to take to slowly and incrementally improve your film roll. And that's going to free energy for you to get there quicker than you thought possible. So let's say you can save 10% of your income. Start doing that. Then you take the Epicurean methodology. And the Epicureans used to fast. They used to go without food for a few days. They used to go without luxuries in order to see what they could do without. So you can ask yourself, what are some of the luxuries on this uh, budget that I can cut out so I can save that money? Now, don't say immediately, oh, I can't cut that out. 
try it, try to go without it or try to find a substitute. For example, if you go to a gym, try to see if it will be cheaper to do exercises in your house or try to go to a park. If you go to the cinema, try to see if you can't find free videos of that and watch it on your laptop. You see, you can apply this modality of thinking and remember, this is just temporary. While you're in your state, while you're in your imaginative state, you can imagine yourself going to as many movies as you want. But you have to ask yourself, do I really need this to get the feeling? Does this really make me happy? And if it does, keep doing it. But if it's something that you could possibly cut out, this is going to be more vibrationally resonant, and this is going to help you get to your goal of that anti-fragility. When you can get there, May, let's say, may, let's say you, God forbid, you lose your job, and you only have two months of savings. That's still a lot more than this person had, who we're talking about, and that's going to give you some breathing space. And what you need, ladies and gentlemen, so that you can apply this modality and methodology comfortably, and so that you can get into that state quicker, you need breathing space. That's why Nassim Talib in Anti-Fragility talks about planning for these disasters, planning for the events before they happen, and then being prepared for those. Of course, the most important preparedness is spiritual preparedness. And that's being able to retreat into yourself. And you can retreat into yourself no matter what you have. Whether you have money stored away, whether you have food storage, you can retreat into yourself anytime and then everything on the outer is going to fall into place. You just do that by getting into the silence. Each and every one of you can do that right now. But on this film roll, just for your peace of mind, and just for vibrational resonance, start doing what you can to lay away food. And we're not members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints here, but the Mormons, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, have the best guides to financial and physical and temporal preparedness. Get some food storage, ladies and gentlemen. It won't hurt. And you can do it very cheaply because we never know what's going to go on with this prison grid. It's all so interconnected. And as we see throughout the world, any disaster can set off Dom, a cascade of dominoes that can affect the everybody's job, that can affect the electrical grid, that can affect food supplies. It will behoove you to have some food supplies. You can read more to do that. We'll talk about it. Get some basic food stores. Learn some basic skills, ladies and gentlemen. Learn a little bit about survivalism. Learn a little bit about cooking and cooking off the grid, off the electrical grid, learn a little bit about hunting, fishing, and so on and so forth. Educate yourself, but don't overwhelm yourself. Do it in a way that's fun, and do it in a way that's incremental. And keep imagining yourself in the state of the person who has all that wisdom, and you're going to get it quicker than you thought possible. So do a little bit of all of that, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be talking about that more in our videos. You want to be resilient. You want to be prepared just so that you can have peace of mind and you want to have that financial resilience set aside so that you can withstand any shots and so that a shot will not be a showstopper for you getting to that, that eventuality of being free from the prison grid, being free from the job and boss. This just reminds us of that. Every shock in your life, use it as a reminder, use it as an alarm, if you will, to return back to that state of where you want to be. And remember, it's all about the state. Everything else is just a sideshow, a side conversation. But it behooves you to smooth out the film roll that you're on so that you can have as least of a bumpy ride as possible. Unless you like bumpy rides, and a lot of people do. So that was just a quick advice. And we will keep you posted on this gentleman regarding the job loss issue and so on and so forth. Remember, together we're strong as a community. And if you want to be part of this community of master manifestors, please subscribe to our channel below. You'll help us get the word out and you'll be sinking your energy in with a community of master manifestors. I am doing coaching where I can teach you how to make more progress in weeks than many people make in years. We are continuing along with our series on strategic 
planning, so do shoot me an email and we can schedule a call. Until very soon, ladies and gentlemen, this is Javier bidding you adieu. I'll see you guys later. Have a great weekend.